Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you on June 16th to talk about tomorrow morning's uh, four-game DFS slate, League of Legends. Uh, we have two games in the LPL and two games in the LCK. Uh, very exciting. Um, let's see. We have in the LPL EDG versus JDG. That's a very exciting matchup there. Uh, both elite teams, in my opinion, going at it. Going at it. And then RNG versus FPX. I'm actually really surprised that RNG is this big of a favorite. Um, I know RNG had just is coming off of an MSI championship win uh, in that tournament, international tournament. Um, but FPX is not not as I mean, it's not a they're not a scrub team. I know uh, Clid, Karen, LWX, and Shaolao who had a really good game. Uh, Latin in the last series, and FPX has already a game under his under their belt. So. Don't count them out. I mean, I think RNG is the, you know, mid-season world champion right now. But with the new top laner now, Breathe, um, got traded for Ben. Ben is now at BLG and Breathe is now starting in the top lane for RNG. Obviously, Breathe is is a really good player. Um, probably as good as Ben, in my opinion. But most people don't really know about him because he played on a lesser team like Team WE before. But he's actually a solid top laner, so I really like RNG's chances here. But you know, I, I just I just don't think they deserve the nine minus nine hundred odds as a favorite. So I, I I you know I think taking a shot with FPX at plus four seventy five is a really good uh, value proposition. I think. So for those uh, straight up betters, I think that's a good a good bet. And then for DFS purposes, I think for GPP, I mean, yeah, I think you definitely take a shot with the FPX, in my opinion, in a large GPP contest. Because, I mean, like I said, RNG first game back after that tournament. Who knows what they've been doing during the offseason? Uh, I mean, not very short offseason, rather, between the MSI and the summer split. Um, and then now they have a new top laner. Uh, there are some factors and variables that could slow RNG down here today um, in their first game and of the summer split. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a decent spot for FPX in my opinion. And yeah, for cash purposes, yeah, I mean, I think RNG should win, but I don't know if I need to go there today. So we'll see. And then in the LCK, um, Lift Sandbox. Well, actually, before we go to LCK, let's dive a little bit deeper into LPL, who, who I think will win between EDG and JDG. So one thing I wanted to point out um, from watching the summer split and the new patch and new meta that's currently in place right now. One thing I noticed and one thing I heard from experts as well is that 80 carries matter more than ever. The, the way that 80 carries play and carry the game and can carry the game and can um, have a much bigger influence on the game, especially in a team fight is a very big matter of importance in my opinion so my analysis like during this meta will have that factor heavily in place so for example here who is a better ad carry between edg and jdg viper i mean viper is a better ad carry than hope hope is not bad but he's not viper uh, so I think, I think I'm just going to give a little bit of advantage to EDG. That's one of the factors, obviously in my matchup analysis. And then in the top lane and jungle, I'd say in the jungle is very important as well here today in this meta JJ and Kanavi, obviously Kanavi is a top jungler. Um, and JJ is with as well. Um, but I, I prefer Kanavi there. So I think jungling, uh, from the jungling uh, standpoint, JDG is favored. And then from the AD carry standpoint, EDG is favored. And then in the mid lane, and I think Scout has been up and down a little bit in terms of form, but I prefer Mako over missing in the bottom lane and then Flandre over 369. I really think 369 is, is, is the weakest point in J, uh, for JDG here. Uh, he has not shown very great synergy and he hasn't really been himself, in my opinion, in the spring split. Maybe that will change in the summer split. But for now, I'm going to have to favor EDG here today just because of the better AD carry and then in the better top lane and then decent jungler uh, in JJ. 
and then in the support position. So I'm going to have to fair, favor EDG there. And then, like I said, RNG FPX. I mean, I think FPX is a decent team. I mean, they're not like a, you know, they're not under talk. They're not a scrub team. You know, uh, I really do think RNG has a pretty good shot. I mean, FPX has a pretty good shot. So uh, while I think RNG will win eventually, ultimately, um, but I, th- I wouldn't be surprised if FPX wins the series today. I don't think it will be 2-0. I think FPX can definitely pull a game off in the series. So it, it will either be 2-1 RNG or 2-1 FPX, I think. All right. In the LCK, it's going to be Sandbox versus Kwangdong Freaks. Uh, as you guys know, um, Kwangdong Freaks has already played a game uh, in this summer split. And Sandbox, uh, on the other hand, has not. And Sandbox was probably in my opinion the worst team in the lck in the last split spring split so uh, they have kept the you know exact same roster um so unless they made huge huge improvements in the off season for somehow like for some you know synergy and team uh you know chemistry reasons i just do not see sandbox winning here today um also teddy played lights out like i said 80 carry meta right now teddy much better 80 carry than prince or envy in my opinion so i'm gonna have to favor kdf although lm you know i think lm was a little bit shaky around objectives in their last series um but i believe in keen over dove dove although dove dove has not been that bad you know in this top top laner after he moved from the mid laner to the top laner for sandbox but I just, I just feel like Keen and Teddy will carry that team. And Croco can blow up um, and can win one game in the series probably by himself by carrying uh, the sandbox on his back. But I just feel like Teddy, uh, better AD carry meta. And then uh, Keen in the top lane will, will be the difference in my opinion. I just do not see sandbox losing. I mean, sandbox winning here today. So I'll probably have zero exposure to sandbox. And Sandbox has given up a lot of deaths uh, in the spring split. So that favors KDF's upside. I know you guys probably saw today, if you guys played in the mornings, uh, this morning slate uh, with Damwon Kia, um, that game, uh, you know, the first kill came after 34 minutes in the game, which is just beyond ridiculous. I mean, I had Damwon Kia in my cash lineup because I did. I mean, my, my prediction was that both LCK favorites were going to win two to zero, uh, both Genji and the Damwon Kia, which they did, except, you know, they lived up to the LCK stereotype where they just did not score enough kills, right? <clears throat> so it didn't really matter. You had to have um, some LPL exposure in your lineup, and I did not, so I did not cash. So, and that's going to happen here and there, but... I think that was more of an anomaly. Um, I think here else between Sandbox and KDF, and like I said, Sandbox likes to team fight, so that really increases the KD, KDF's upside to, here today. I, I really like Teddy, uh, Teddy here today. I think Teddy should definitely hit, uh, probably over the kill uh, threshold, whatever the the number is set at on Prize Picks. For those of you who play Prize Picks. Uh, um, and then also straight up betters. Uh, if you think um, KDF will score over the total kills, uh, whatever it is set at, I would definitely hit, hit on over for KDF's kills. And then T1 versus Nongshim Red Force. Uh, T1 is coming back uh, from the MSI, just like RNG I mentioned. T1 uh, was the runner up in the MSI tournament um, after RNG um, beat them. And T1 is half has the same five. You know, as you guys know, if you guys remember, um, T1 finished undefeated without a single loss in the series uh, in the spring split. So that was very impressive, obviously. But obviously, they lost to some teams, international teams in the MSI tournament. So I think that pressure is off of them uh, to kind of maintain the, you know, winning streak. But here they're playing against Nongshim Red Force, who, you know, they are, they also has had a game, have had a game in the summer split so far, Nongshim Red Force, and they look decent, um, but I just feel like Ghost and Effort were not on the same page, and they were just really weak. Um, they did not uh, show me a strong, uh, you know, synergy and show, you know, show me a strong uh, showing, basically, um, in the bottom lane, but although Kana and, 
Dread was okay. I mean, I think I like Kana a lot today, but Zeus had has played amazing in the MSI and you know probably will play amazing. And both Zeus and owner got extensions for, for T1 uh contract wise. So I think that pressure and worries, those worries are gone for those two players. So they can just focus on winning games for T1. So I'm gonna have to favor T1 here today. And Gumayushi, hopefully he'll bounce back after the, you know, some dismal performance and the MSI. I do think still, even at that form, um, Gumayushi is a better AD carry than Ghost. And like I said, AD carry meta. I like T1's uh, chances here today. Um, and even if Nongshim somehow up, pulls off an upset off T1, if T1 gets behind, they know how to sit back, scale back a little bit and wait for the late game late game to start. So that does not bode well for Nongshim Red Force's kill upside. So I don't think I will have any Nongshim either, just like no sandbox, just because, like I said, of that lack of kill upside against the in the matchup against T1. Um, like I said, if T1 gets behind, they will play slower. So... I like T, but also on, on the other side of the matchup, ultimately my prediction is that T1 will win and then KDF will win. So I think those two teams make safe, uh, you know, stackable options, in my opinion, on the slate. And then for EDG, JDG, like I said, I think EDG is going to win. Um, but JDG that can definitely pull it off. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, but I'll have a higher exposure on EDG and then RNG here. And then FPX can definitely pull it off. So for deep GPP, I think I'll go with FPX. And that should be a pretty high kill upside game right there versus uh, EDG. So in terms of ranking uh, the kill upside games, I'd say this is number one right here, RNG versus FPX. EDG, JDG is number two. And then Sandbox, KDF, number three. And then T1, Nongshim, Red Force is number four. Maybe this could turn out to be number two because of the sa- because of Sandbox's tendencies uh, to kind of get crazy in team fights. So, and then maybe three for EDG and JDG, but between LS, uh, Sandbox, KD, KDF versus uh, EDG and JDG, I think that can just be back and forth. But I, th- I prefer definitely RNG at an FPX game for, from the kill upside standpoint. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I tried to jam in as much information I could within the 10 minute video uh, here. Uh, some people have uh, told me that they like to only watch for like 10 minutes or so. So I'm just trying to keep it short. But if you like the video, please hit the like button here or subscribe to our channel. Um, but if you guys have any questions, you know, you can reach me out, uh, reach out to me at DFS Chan on any social media you can find basically Twitter, YouTube, uh, on Discord for true DFS members. But yeah, good luck out there and have some fun. Bye bye.